All right, in this video, we're going to talk about congruent triangles, how to name two triangles that are congruent. There's a certain order we need to name them in. And then how to just talk about their corresponding angles and side measurements. Um, so let's get into our notes here. Corresponding. Corresponding means um, same spot or same angle or same side. Um, but on a different shape, on a different line, if you remember from our parallel lines cut by a transversal. So same spot, different shape. In this case, we're going to be talking about the same spot of a different triangle. Um, remember what congruent means. It means equal to, same as. Any of those words. Those are going to be our big vocab words for this lesson. All right, if we're looking at two triangles here, um, we need to be able to think about their congruent corresponding parts. So, first, let's just talk about their sides. Let's say that we measured this segment, segment AB. And we said that it was equal to segment XY. So when we talk about corresponding congruent parts of shapes, um, their sides get these little hash marks. So the first side, corresponding sides that are equal, are going to get one hash mark. Let's measure a second side. Say that we measured BC, and that measurement was the same as or congruent to segment YZ. So our second side that's congruent, we're going to give it two hash marks. The third side we measure, segment AC, we find that it's the same as segment XZ. So we give it three hash marks. Every time you get a different length that you're talking about or a different segment, you increase the hash marks and only give the ones that are equal or congruent the same amount of hash marks. So let's try and name some congruent corresponding sides here. So the AB, segment AB was congruent to segment XY. And we said segment BC was congruent to segment YZ. And our last one was segment AC that was congruent to segment XZ. Alright, so we just named congruent corresponding sides. We matched up the letters in the same order. So A and X went first in their names. B and Y went second. Alright, so we're lining up and putting in the same spot our corresponding sides. Oops. Move it up just a little bit. Let's talk about angles now. This is angle A. Let's say we measure it, and it turns out to be the same measurement as angle X. Well, we give it an arc, like a rainbow. Segment B, or sorry, angle B, we measure, and we find that it's the same as angle Y. So it's the second one that we did. We're going to give it two arcs. And the third one, if we saw that angle C measured the same as angle Z, we would give it three arcs. And that allows us visually to name the corresponding congruent parts. Let's do the names now. Angle A. Congruent to angle X. Angle B here was congruent to angle Y. And angle Z. Oops, sorry, let's say C first. C was congruent to angle Z. So now we named all of our corresponding parts. We named all of our corresponding sides and our corresponding angles of those two triangles, we could say that they're congruent and we would name them 
say triangle ABC is congruent to this triangle with its corresponding parts put in the same space. So A and X were the same, so they both go first in the name. B and Y were second. Oops, sorry. And then C and Z. So each letter lined up with the corresponding parts in the other triangle. Look at this next triangle here. So let's say that we measured um, a couple of angles here. We measured this one, and it turned out to be 90 degrees, so we put a square there. Turns out that this is also 90 degrees, so these are corresponding parts. They're corresponding angles. They're the same measurement. Let's say that we measured this angle, and it turned out to be the same as... Okay, right. They get the same amount of arcs then. And our last one gets two. So that angle N and angle Y here were the same measurement. Now, as you can see, we had three angles and we didn't use three arcs because instead we used a square. And that kind of, you, um, kind of serves two purposes. One, it tells you it's 90 degrees or a right angle, and uh, the other is allows you to see what corresponding parts are equal. All right. So now let's try and name these two triangles, just like we did to those other two, in the same order so that their corresponding parts match up. So we'd say angle M-O-N is congruent to well, what's congruent to M? K. What's congruent to O? E. And what's congruent to N? Y. So these are all in the same order. That's how we name corresponding congruent triangles. Just line up their letters, their sides or angles. Alright, so a bit more practice here. Slowly, we're going to get away from the visual of our triangles, and just looking at the names down here, we'll get to it in a sec. See if we can talk about the same stuff. Be able to name them and their corresponding parts in the right order. All right, so let's see. What is congruent with triangle ABO? Well, first of all, let's make sure our letters match up here. ABO. So what is the same as A? Well, if we were to measure, we'd see that those are 90 degree angles. So they're corresponding. So whatever is corresponding with A has to be first in the name. So G goes first in this other triangle. And then uh, B, well, if we measured it, we could say that those were equal. We're going to give them two arcs, not because of any reason. I just wanted to give these ones in the middle one arc when we get there. So B and R, so they have to be in the middle there. And if you remember, these are vertical angles, and vertical angles are always congruent. So anytime you see a picture of vertical angles, know that they're always going to be congruent. Um, so O and O, well, they got to be the same. All right, so what's congruent with A? We already said it, angle G. What's congruent with segment AO? Well, we got to do it in the same order, so GO. And remember, if we are looking at what looks to be like a segment or ray or line name, and it doesn't have a symbol, we're talking about the measurement of. So the measurement, whatever length B to O was, this measurement right here, what would be that the same measurement? Well, whatever's corresponding on this triangle. So RO. Those measurements are congruent or equal. 
All right, so now, can we do it without a picture? You're allowed to still draw a picture if you want, but let's try and do it without it. Name three pairs of corresponding sides. So we're talking about segments. Um, so there's three segments in this triangle. So segment AB is going to be our first one. What is that congruent with? Well, whatever comes first and second in this one, X and Y. Second, we could do BC. doesn't matter what order we go in. Just that we match up the letters in the same order. So this one would have to be segment YZ. Middle and last letters. And last one would be first and last letters. So AC. What is that congruent with? Well, XZ over there. Name three pairs of corresponding angles. So each letter is going to represent an angle in these triangles. So angle A is congruent with the first letter in the other one, angle X. The middle angle, angle B, is congruent with angle Y in the other triangle. And angle C is congruent with angle Z in the other triangle. Just the last letters. All right. Let's do this little challenge here. Is it accurate to say that triangle CBA is congruent with XZY? So what we're doing is we're looking at the same name up here. And this could be another way that we name it, but as long it's only the same if the letters are in the same order. So C has to be the last letter of this one. So Z, is that the first one over here? No. C and X are not corresponding, so these triangles are not, not congruent because the letters don't line up. Corresponding parts don't line up. They're not in the same order, whatever you want to say. All right, so that is naming congruent triangles and uh, talking about their corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Just do it in the same order as long as you can do that. You're well on your way to doing proofs, which we're getting into next.